Neil and I, we both work at the Berlin Ethics Lab in uh, at the Technical University in Berlin. And what we do is we support the process of digital environments. So in one case, for example, we were talking with practitioners who were uh, developing digital assessment tools. One common concern we learned from them was that a big issue is, of course, the question of data and privacy. So on the one hand, for example, most of the tools that are available, they are third party tools. That means they take the data collected and we don't really know what they do with those data. So we, when developing tools for digital assessment, we need to make sure that the data stay with the developers and with the people who use those technologies. So that not that they get drained and maybe sold for something else. Another issue, of course, is the question of privacy that I said before. It's not only data privacy, but it's also the situation that oftentimes when you do digital assessment processes, you have a glimpse or an insight into the privacy area or the private area of the assessed person. So, for example, when talking about proctoring tools, people have to use video cameras to show to the assessor that there's nobody else in the room. This, of course, means that the assessor also has access and sees the private area. And oftentimes, when talking with, with like, oftentimes these um, the people that assessed are students, and thus they have to let the professor or the uh, or the lector into their own private spaces. And this is, of course, there's a there's a breach or a, a breach of privacy in this case. We have been working on online assessment and ethics of digitalization in teaching, mainly with um, projects that collaborated under the title of Prüfung hoch 3. This is a network for digitalization in Baden-Württemberg, Germany, and the universities of Aachen and Nürnberg Erlangen. And together we conducted two major workshops, one rather for scoping and the extended project teams. This is where we figured um, out basically a vast range of potential implications for social aspects, technological aspects, and broader systemic aspects of digitalization of exams. And then we did a second, more specific workshops with stakeholders focusing on online exams and the questions of uh, data privacy and data security um, in terms of inclusion, diversity, and equal chances, and a third topic um, connected to didactics and the values of teaching. So we yeah, um, invited stakeholders across a whole board of exams, students, uh, representative of uh, student groups, for example, with uh, special needs, uh, administrative side, teaching side, and all together discuss those topics that came out to be yeah, of most relevance in the first workshop. So this is where we basically take our insights in terms of ethical issues in digitalization from. If you're planning and designing online assessments, then the major insight, I guess, was that this is a didactic choice. So it's about the values that you have in teaching and what you want to test. Um, a lot of digitalization efforts are yeah, about how to ensure that people are not cheating, for example. This is issues that come up with proctoring that we've been talking about earlier. That's about how to make sure that nobody's in the room. This is also the issues that come up with ChatGPT, for example. How to make sure people are not cheating. Um, but the bigger question is if this is what we want. Do we want to test people on basically giving back the knowledge that they have learned by heart? Or are we testing different skills? And um, in our work, what comes up a lot is the question of um, how to be more future oriented in teaching, for example. And this comes with questions of how to be more practice oriented, how to be more collaborative in teaching. And if you go in this direction, and if this is um, of value to you in your teaching, then online assessments, basically copying the analog format into a digital space, is not actually what you need. So the bigger question is how to test what you want to test. And then if you need an online exam in this digital assessment mode um, at all. Planning, design and implementation of online assessments, of course, go together. So consider what you want to implement, especially if you want to implement it in an ethical way already in the design phase. 
when looking at the implementation more specifically, what we found out was a special attention needs to be paid to inclusion. So make sure that everybody has an equal chance to actually participate in the exam. There are opportunities and challenges here. So for example, especially for students with mobility needs, there's a vast potential in being online assessed. At the same time, there might be new exclusions due to a lack of di digital infrastructure or internet access and so on. And one aspect I think that might stick is design for the most excluded. Because if it works for those that are most excluded, then it probably works for everybody else too. So keep in mind this idea of um, being inclusive and checking on the borders so nobody is dropping out. And also consider the atmosphere that you are um, creating while examination. With a lot of digital um, tools, there comes this surveillance mode and instructors tend to be more of a yeah, guard in this sense, but are needed for students as someone to be approachable, to offer help. So it's a question of how to design an atmosphere even in a digital assessment. And a last point on implementation is that we are still lacking a lot of guidelines, standards, even legal requirements. So there's a huge open debate on how to proceed with the digitalization of exams. And um, there's a huge chance of participating the way we want to go. So if you are interested, then join, create visions, try to be active in how we foster our way forward. New technology usually always change an established system, like for example, ChatGPT. And we also see here that the education system needs to rethink the way that they assess uh, learning. But I think this not, does not only cause a challenge, but it also causes, uh, creates opportunities. So this is an opportunity for us, for example, to rethink how we assess learning. So not just ask students to recap a book, for example, but rather inspire them to write something what, that comes from their own. So what does it do with you when you read this book, for example? These are completely different ways of assessing and creating opportunities for the students to uh, rethink and also engage with the material they learn.